Hey guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 4, Electrochemistry. Let's look at some electrolysis examples. First, the electrolysis of molten lead to bromide. Insert the inert electrodes made of platinum or carbon graphite into the molten lead to bromide. Why do we use these inert electrodes? Because they don't get involved in the chemical reactions, avoiding any interference. Remember, molten compounds are substances in a liquid state resulting from being heated above their melting points. When a compound is molten, it has free ions that can carry charge during electrolysis. Connect the electrodes to the power supply and observe the reactions. The chemical formula for lead to bromide is PBBr2. So the ions present are Pb2 plus and Br1 minus. Bromide ions with a negative charge will be attracted to the positive electrode, the anode. Lead ions carrying a positive charge will travel towards the negative electrode, the cathode. At the anode, bromine gas forms and this is observed as brown gas bubbles. So each bromide ion releases one electron resulting in the formation of bromine molecules. Two bromide ions are oxidized to form a bromine molecule. Lead forms at the cathodes and this can be observed as a grey metal, molten lead, that accumulates on the electrode surface. Lead ions gain electrons at the cathode and become lead atoms. In the case of electrolysis of an aqueous solution, however, remember that aqueous means a substance mixed with water. So, the ions in the electrolyte come from both the dissolved substance and water, including hydrogen and hydroxide ions. For example, for electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride, NaCl, the ionization would be represented as follows. So the ions in the electrolyte will be Na+, Cl-, H+, and OH-. So the electrolyte will contain ions from the compound plus ions from water. In these situations involving more than two ions in the electrolyte, how do we predict which ions are discharged and at which electrodes? Metals or hydrogen are formed at the cathode and non-metals other than hydrogen are formed at the anode. So at the cathode, that is the negative electrode, only one either the metal ion or the hydrogen ion will be discharged. To know which one, we must refer to the reactivity series, which is a list of metals arranged in order of their reactivity and it determines which metal ions get discharged at the cathode. Whichever is less reactive will be discharged. So let's look at the reactivity series. As you go down the series, reactivity tends to decrease. The elements at the top are more reactive. For example, if choosing between hydrogen and potassium, as you can see, hydrogen is less reactive. 
So hydrogen ions will be discharged at the cathode and hydrogen gas will be produced. If, for example, the cations in the electrode are hydrogen and copper, copper is less reactive, so it will be copper that is discharged at the cathode. In both cases, the other ion will remain in the solution. Now what about the anode? In the case of the anode, during the electrolysis of an aqueous solution, it's either the hydroxide ion or a non-metal ion that gets discharged. If the choice is between a halide ion or a hydroxide ion, the halide is discharged at the anode, forming a halogen. If there is no halide, hydroxide ions are discharged at the anode. They lose electrons and produce oxygen gas. The other negative ion remains in the solution. There's another factor to consider, the concentration. If it's a halide in concentrated solution, then the halogen is produced at the anode. If the halide is in a dilute solution, oxygen will be produced. Let's observe the electrolysis of concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. Once again, using inert electrodes made of platinum or carbon graphite, we arrange the electrolyte for electrolysis. Now remember, in the electrolysis of an aqueous solution, the ions in the electrolyte come from both the dissolved substance and water. So the ions present in the electrolyte will be Na+, Cl-, H+, and OH-. At the cathode, the negative electrode, H plus ions will be discharged since it's less reactive than sodium ions. So H plus ions move to the cathode and gain electrons and form hydrogen gas. At the anode or positive electrode, chloride ions are discharged. They lose electrons and produce chlorine gas. Na plus and OH minus ions remain and combine to form NaOH solution. Now the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid. Remember, inert electrodes made of platinum or carbon graphite are used to avoid their participation in chemical reactions. The ions involved will be H+, OH-, and SO4-. Since for this example, there's not really a choice to make, it's both H plus cations, it's pretty straightforward. Hydrogen ions are attracted to the cathode and gain electrons, forming hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas is observed as bubbles evolving at the cathode. So H plus ions are reduced at the cathode. At the anode, oxygen gas is released. Hydroxide ions are attracted to the anode. Since sulfate ions are not halide ions, it's the hydroxide ion that gets discharged. Remember, if a halide is not present, then it's always the hydroxide that gets discharged. They lose electrons and form oxygen gas and water. So OH- ions are oxidized. That concludes part 2 of topic 4, electrochemistry. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use 
YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye.